Cheers, grab a cup of tea. Today I have some orange pico with my cream obviously and some sugar, so tea time. I wanted to kind of do a little chit chat, let's connect type of video. I have never been someone who enjoys being alone. I do like to have my alone time. I say it like that because to most people it's probably not alone time. Like I have some friends that are very introverted people. Their definition of being alone is in their bed, away from the world. I have friends that are very introverted to where I'll be like, hey, do you wanna hang out? And they're like, I just can't, I don't have the energy for it. Where I have the energy all the time to hang out with everyone, no matter what. My version of alone time is doing the activities that I like to do or like stuff that I do for myself, but I don't mind having people around. I guess it's not really a typical alone time. So when my boyfriend Thomas and I decided to move into this apartment for the first time in January, he works 16 days on, 16 days off, meaning I am alone in this apartment for a little over two weeks every other cycle. I knew I had some adjusting to do. So I have around two and a half weeks, two and a couple days alone at a time every other cycle. He works in the oil fields away from home and it used to be 10 days on, 10 days home, but because of COVID it has been changed to 16 days at work to, to 16 days home. You gotta believe the excitement for me when I found that out. Despite the fact that we moved into a brand new apartment together for the first time in an area of the city that I had never even been to before, and I've lived here my entire life in this city, can I just point that out? Never been to this area of the city, so I had to adjust to all of the basic things like that on top of the fact that my family growing up, my parents were always home when I would come home from school, and then when I got kicked out and I moved in with my grandma and my aunt, they don't work and they don't really do a lot of stuff outside of the house. The extent of their outdoor living is their backyard. And when I lived there, they were home all the time. I never stayed in that house by myself and I lived there for like two years. Never had I lived by myself. And then to top it off, I think my situation is quite different than normal people who maybe live alone or spend a lot of time alone without wanting to because I do suffer from anxiety. I have like generalized anxiety and I do believe I have um, I've never been diagnosed with, but I feel like I have forms of social anxiety. Those anxieties spill into every aspect of my life and one of the areas that they touch is when it comes to me being alone. My social anxiety comes out when it comes to things that I have to do. I used to get really bad anxiety about getting groceries by myself, which is something I would probably typically do with Thomas when he's home, or I would have anxiety about taking out the garbage, or even sometimes taking him out for a walk. I can be a little bit anxious about it and I can't explain it. It doesn't make any sense. It's just the way life is for most humans, but for me it can be a huge chore or a big anxious situation to get those things done by myself. So the basic adjustments that any normal human would have to make when it comes to living on their own or even if you add on to the fact that I don't live alone all the time. I do have a boyfriend and he does live here the 16 days that he is home so I have to deal with all of that and the relationship stuff that comes with that. So I have all these additional adjustments that I have to make when it comes to my anxiety. So I am just a big ball of most important thing for me when it came to living by myself when Thomas is away is that I wanted to be okay and be happy in my own company and not let myself get depressed thinking that I have to be with people all the time. Again, my anxiety kind of changes things in this area because I feel like it bothers me in ways that maybe like average people who maybe don't have anxiety or social anxiety based issues don't experience. I feel like the average person living alone might have fears of like sleeping alone at night and worrying someone might come in or maybe worrying about like making dinner because they're never used to making dinner on their own. It was always just prepared. In terms of my social anxiety, I do have anxiety based around what people might 
think of me. That comes from a lot of family trauma stuff. That's a whole other can of worms that we're not gonna open in this video. I get concerned a lot when I'm out doing stuff that I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna think I'm weird. They're going to look at me in a weird way. I don't know. Brain can't understand, but my body just feels, if that makes any sense. If you have anxiety, I'm sure that you guys understand what I'm talking about. If not, you have no idea what I'm talking about and that's okay too. Since we started dating, Thomas has always worked at his job. So he's always worked in these big, chunked cycles and then we moved out together and I had to deal with a whole new dilemma of being alone because at least when I was living at my grandma's house in our first year of dating my grandma was there 24 7 I got to spend a lot of time with her she was always listening to music watching tv talking on the phone like she was always there moving here I had to learn how to be by myself all Time. I guess I'll get into some of the things that I did to help me um, adjust. The biggest thing was I definitely made sure to create a very productive morning and evening routine to keep me distracted. I like to call it a distraction, but it kept me busy while I was still working on myself. And I think that because I had these routines strictly for me, it helped me to flow into working on myself, staying busy, which is super important, I think, if you were going through any kind of big transition because it allows you to adjust while still feeling like you're not focusing on that particular subject if that makes any sense. It helped me find the safety and the comfort in living alone because I was doing these routines that I had done for a long time and I was doing things for myself so it made me feel really happy and feel good so it was kind of a very cohesive thing. Um, I also was very productive and stayed on top of a lot of my shit so that was a bonus mark for a lot of that. I don't think I was distracting myself from the pain or from the anxiety that I was feeling. I think it was more of like, okay, you have this time that you probably would be spending stressing out and crying and freaking out, but instead let's do things that are going to help you, make you feel better. And that was super, super helpful. The other thing that helped me quite a bit was the fact that I knew that when he would come home, those 16 days home, we were gonna be doing tons. We have very packed days off. We do tons of stuff together. We have regular couple things that we do where we watch TV and have movie nights, or we go on big camping trips, or we go skiing or hiking, or we go on road trips. I don't feel like I'm ever missing out on doing things with him, which I'm super grateful for. Knowing that those days are coming up really do help me kind of get through that time. I know it's different for those of you who maybe you're living by yourselves all the time and you're like well that doesn't make sense for me because nobody's coming over to see me but this can be a transition for you if you have a lot of friends that you're gonna go out and hang out with or your family that can be kind of something that you look forward to it's okay to have time right now by yourself it's okay to have this space that's private and your own but that you are going to go see people and have all this time with others it helps you appreciate the time you have by yourself right now at least for me anyway over time I've learned to enjoy my own company and it came from little things along the way of just like pushing myself past my anxious moments and doing things that I love to do. I think also just learning more about myself that you can't really do with having people around. Understanding what I want in my life, who I think I am, who I want to become, what I've learned. Those are things that come from time with yourself that you don't get from being around other people. Being a childhood trauma survivor if you want to call it that. I basically had to walk around eggshells from my family and I couldn't be who I wanted to be and I was a very big people pleaser because if I didn't please them here the next day or I would experience it the next day. I think I kind of became someone that just didn't know how to be by myself or love myself or connect with who I was. It was always about other people. People were always my number one priority up until like a year ago. And now people are still really important to me. I'm a very social connected person. It brings me a lot of joy to be around people. However, it's not my number one priority. I have boundaries now and that's a big thing that I've learned from being by myself. A lot of growth has definitely happened in my time alone. There's not really like specific, here's what you're gonna do right now to make yourself feel better being alone. It's more of what are you wanting deep within yourself? Listen to what's being said. This is your time to finally do that. And I think that's such a freeing feeling. I'm also not a city person. I just wanna point that out. I live in the heart of my city. I live downtown and that's hard for me because I'm somebody that does not like to do city stuff. I would rather be out gardening or riding horses or playing with my dog. I've learned to love over time for the time being because we're not staying in the city forever, but another lesson, you know, lesson upon lesson upon lesson. I've learned so much. 
Having a pet is also an incredible thing. I saved that for last because I know a lot of people can't just go out and get a dog or a cat. Pets really do make a huge difference. I haven't really introduced Moose to my channel yet. He is our miniature Dachshund puppy. We got him early September, so he is three and a half months. Look at him. He's the sweetest little baby. Yeah, I love him very, very much. If you guys are interested in a video about Moose, how we got him, videos of him back when he was, a, he's still a puppy, but when he was a puppy, and how we trained him and all that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. Overall, I think living alone, whether it's in my situation, whether you have anxiety or not, or whether you're completely alone, it's such an amazing experience. And even though in the beginning it's terrifying and you think that it's not worth it, I think everyone needs to have time like this in your life where you live by yourself. It's a really important part of that connection with yourself. I think especially in your early 20s, that's when you're figuring out your life, man. Like, I don't know 100% everything that I'm doing, but I've learned a lot about who I am and who I want to become. And not everyone needs to live alone to make these life changes. I want to point that out. Being somebody who focuses so much on other people's needs first before my own, making sure other people are happy, dropping everything in your life for other people and kind of like focusing all your energy on others. I kind of have to be forced to have time to focus on myself. Living alone makes you do that because you have no choice. So I kind of wanted just to chat with you guys and share that part of my life that I'm living even right now, how it was for me before, how it is for me now. There is a lesson in all that we do and all that we go through and it's just about when you decide to see that lesson. The drink is done, which means this video has come to an end as well. I hope all of you are doing okay whether you are still in quarantine living alone whatever made you click on this video I'm assuming there's some sort of loneliness in your heart today I hope some of it lifted at least a little bit in this video I really enjoy talking to you guys and having these little chats I hope you guys have a warm and beautiful rest of your day and I will see you guys in my next video and so will moose bye guys